we could do something I've been meaning to do for a long time, and that is an art journal walkthrough. So this is an art journal of mine from 2012, and it's using one of my favorite journals, um, which is the Global Arts Handbook Watercolor Journal. And you can see how it gets stained um, because of the sort of clothy cover. So that's one of the reasons I painted the cover with black gesso um, and then painted on top of it, obviously, a little pretty thing. It covers up all those stains. And I suppose I could do the rest of the journal, but that seems like a lot of work. Okay, so inside on the inside covers, this printing is actually it's a jelly print of one of my stencils you can sort of see a little bit here and I just glued it's a jelly print onto deli paper which I glued in here and then painted over the edges of and I think it creates a nice opening to the journal um, these first few pages I was taking a class with one of my favorite art journalers Judy Wise and so some of the stuff in here is stuff I was experimenting with that's from her style that's not really mine like putting the quote in um, using more sort of ephemera like this that kind of stuff is not really my my thing and this page is in fact a very very Judy page and again not totally me it has a little Julie in it but like the disconnected arms and the way that the face looks and these little strips here that there these are um, glued in uh, then this is an image transfer love doing image transfers and then also I had a page here that I didn't like very much so what I did is I just cut it off I sandwiched these tags actually between two pages and it created a kind of a neat little edge here which I really like. Now this is a page that when I made it I really I hated everything about it but I think one of the things about the art journal that's so great is when you don't like the way something looks you just flip the page and turn to the next one. This is some hand lettering that took me forever. You don't want to even know how long I spent doing this. And then I couldn't bear to do any journaling or anything on this page because I just thought it was so beautiful and I'd worked so hard at it. I didn't want to go any further. Um, again, you can see faces are a huge motif for me. I do collage a lot in my journal. This is a printed um, paper that's in the back here. I think this is from cleaning off a stencil. Um, I do use acrylic paint a lot. This is fairly unusual for me in one of my daily journals, which is this is a page that is really not daily journaling, meaning I didn't just sit down and do a little bit. This is actually about um, <clears throat> turning 35 and just my thoughts on that whole process. Then this little thing is actually cut out from the newspaper, and I like to put matte medium um, under and over any newspaper that I do and I haven't had a problem with it. I suppose in a hundred years we can come back and see This little insert page actually has wax on it. It's quite sticky and it's actually rubbed away a bit of the writing here But I think it's really neat and this was a self-portrait that I tried to do I don't actually think it looks a lot like me, but it was nice To chew and you know, it's always good to try things your journal is a great place for experimentation here you can see some hand prints. I traced my hands, so there you go. That's exactly where those come from. And this is more stuff from newspapers. And one of my favorite pens, this is the glaze pens from Sakura. They just are so pretty. Um, I will say that they do tend to stick uh, because they're shiny. Anything shiny in an art journal will stick. So I recommend that you always cover that with matte medium or something to get it not to stick. And, you know, I do a lot of demo stuff in my art journal when I teach classes. And so, for instance, this color wheel and even the space were demo things. And then when I came to that page in my journal, I just incorporated it along with everything else. This is one of my favorite stencils that I designed. Um, this is the flower garden stencil. It's really pretty. Okay, so more image transfers. And I like this little drawing of New York. And, oh, this was, oh, I almost didn't mention this. This is just the edge of a file folder, which I added onto my page just for a little bit of fun. Make it a little bit more fun. And it kind of does the switch from April into May. Um, this profile, profiles are something I have a lot of trouble with, and so I like to practice in my art journal. And I used um, the Neocolor 2, the water-soluble crayons from, I'm going to say this completely wrong, but Caron d'Ache, Caron d'Ache, whatever. Those of you who speak French will do it better than me. 
Um, and then again, often in my art journal, I will do stuff like this face was actually a whole face that I demoed in class. But then when it came to do my journal, I didn't love it. So I just cut it in half. I think it made it more interesting. It gave me more space on the page to journal. And then literally while I was on hold with the IRS, I had it on speakerphone and I just doodled away. So remember, your journal is a place both for chronicling what you're doing and for killing some time. So this page is kind of cool. I used, I believe this is a white Sharpie, which is one of my favorite white pens to just write across colors or anything colored, I should say. Sometimes my journal is just about exploring pattern and ideas, shapes, that kind of stuff. I think I used a nib pen and with an, it's like an inkwell, sort of old fashioned style for the writing on that. Um, and then this is a great quote every woman needs a man who will ruin her lipstick not her mascara good thought right and then these are some tags that i made um and people often say what do you do with tags and my answer is you know just throw them in your art journal purely decorative i like this sort of cascade i just taped them in with some washi tape um and then this is just a nice way sometimes to create a divider this is deli paper and I do have a class coming up on deli paper and the million and one uses for it. It's great stuff. And a divider page is one of my things that I like to do with it. Um, oh, here. So this is kind of cool. So this is stenciled paper that I just taped in, right, right there. And then this is a, what I did is I stenciled through a doily. And it actually kind of looks like the doily is there, which I think is so cool. But there's no collage there. This is purely just paint and stenciling. And then here you can see a little bit of magazine collage, not something I do often, not really sure that I love this page, but I do often put to-do lists in my um, book. And it's nice to look back and to see what was I thinking about, what was I dealing with, what were the things that were, you know, needing to get done. This is a packing list. I was clearly going on a trip. Ah, I remember making this page. So I thought that this was so beautiful. It was meant to just be a background and I didn't want to cover it up. So just like the page earlier in the journal somewhere, you remember the green page, ah, just like this page, you know, I just decided I'm gonna leave it alone and this is done. It's just pretty patterns for me to look at because I think they're so nice. And that's it. I didn't end up putting anything in the back. Sometimes I'll write like a concluding statement about where I'm at, but at the time I decided not to. And then I actually left a bunch of the stuff that was in this back pocket that I had been planning to use for um, collage stuff just in here. And I think that's kind of just a nice little treasure trove of stuff for me to find later. I think there's uh, some photos behind this Coco Daisy business card. So that's it. That's a quick art journal flip through for me. I hope you found it interesting and useful. Thanks so much. Save the last dance for